Can the time of his mind I want to invite your attention please to the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew's gospel chapter number 14 starting in the 22nd verse. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 14. Starting in the 22nd verse, you shall have found this, say amen, and stand to your feet to honor the reading and the hearing of this portion of scripture. A familiar comparison. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the way, was far from the land. For the wind was great, the wind was against them. Early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. Hmm. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sing. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you die? Verse 28. He had answered, Lord, if it really is you, tell me to come to you, O oh Lord. He said, Peter, come on. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the wall, and came to Jesus. I want to preach for about 15 minutes, I swear. That's all I want to do today. From the subject, leaving normal. I'm gonna get that. Leaving normal. Yeah, that's L E V I N G. Normal. Leaving normal. That's what God is prayer. Father, where I am, you go. What I know, you talk. What I have, you gave me. What I am, Lord, you made. Lord, I'm depending on you. Can't do nothing until you come. This is my prayer. And all God's children said, Amen. Turn and tell somebody, neighbor. Story that is the story of not only 
Jesus putting the disciples in the boat, but of Peter walking on the water. It is a story that all of us have heard before, and honestly, if I wanted to be somewhat lazy, I could take this text and take the runway that has already been laid by other preachers down in history. And I could lift up the fact that storms will come and winds may blow. I could lift up to you this story and talk about how you can't be afraid and how when Jesus shows up, you got to keep your eyes on him. Y'all heard this before, haven't you? When you keep your eyes on Jesus, the preacher would say, you can walk on the wall. You can do what you thought you couldn't do. And then again, the sermon talking about faith and how you got to stay focused on who the Lord is. Now, I'm not saying that's bad preaching. I'm not saying that's not my focus today. Today, I, I don't want to so much focus on the walking on the wall. Y'all go now. Y'all 
the sea. And as soon as they got in the boat, crossing over to the other side, the winds began to blow. It was dark, it was night, and all of a sudden they found themselves in the midst of a storm. Now, I did my research. It was dark on the Sea of Galilee. Are y'all here? It, it, it was dark and there, there, there were no lights that you could turn on. A fog light or a spotlight to put out on the water so you could see everything. There was no candle that could be lit. It was just out there on the Sea of Galilee going the storm. Now, I did my homework and the Sea of Galilee is 33 miles in circumference and it's 13 miles wide. Y'all get that? Now, here's where my preaching mind dropped me off. Now, if you were walking Jesus across the wall, I 
I believe there's something else here too. See, sometimes we get so busy worshiping Jesus that we forget that's not what it's all about. Oh, talk. One of the problems with the modern church is that we are so busy making Jesus the object of our worship that we fail to understand his call to imitate him. What are you trying to say? We're so busy giving him glory and praise and honor that we forget that what Jesus did was When Jesus broke bread and fed the multitude, he was telling his disciples, y'all do the same thing. When Jesus showed up and touched the casket of the dead boy, and the dead boy got up, when he was saying, oh, my disciples, y'all do the same thing. When Jesus touched the blind
folks shame you. Y'all better talk to me. That's when folks talk about you. That's when people say they're done messing with you. That's when people decide that they can hang around you. Because when you're not normal, there is an uneasiness that's produced. Because normalcy is what everybody wants to be. We want to be normal. We want everybody to see us like they are. When I grew up, I realized early on I was left-handed. And I remember Deacon Bradley in school, teachers telling me I ought to switch my hand. Y'all, y'all, anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I, I remember folks trying to say that, 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 that you need to learn how to be right handed because if you're not right handed, folks don't talk about you. Because you have to write different. And you have, and when the desk used to be, y'all don't know what that means. Like in the day when you had the little desk that was cut, and you set your body inside the desk, the little desk, and you had your, it wasn't designed for left handed folk. So left handed folk had to adjust to right handed reality because everything was normal for right handed folk. Are y'all here? Yeah, when I played softball and baseball in the neighborhood, I guess you say stickball now, I, I, I used to bat left handed, but got talked about so bad I became a right handed bat. Y'all know what happened? When, when I was taking golf lessons, y'all know what happened? I, I took golf lessons. Right hand, because play golf left hand it was was a bit much. Folk would look at you from that. And then I soon realized that what you were doing, you were adapting yourself to fix somebody else. But when you adapt to fix somebody else, they give you their approval. And long as you stay like they want you to stay. Was a savior of normals. 
some of us would never know the awesomeness of our walk with Jesus until we join Jesus outside of normal. Until you get to a place where you no longer care about trying to please and please and please and Until you get to a place where you begin to do what the Lord will have you do. And you're not concerned about the whole thing about it. Until you get in your mind that God is the only one that saves you and can keep you. When you get
But you want to do more than what you've done already. You want to get to a place where you're tired of the same old stuff Sunday to Sunday. You want to get tired of waking up and going to sleep and not seeing anything new or different in your life. You want to get tired of playing church and pretending you're having a good life but you're miserable on the inside. You want to get tired of trying to please folks that don't even know your last name. You want to get tired of trying to impress folks that can't help you at all. You want to get tired of trying to be something that you know that you're not. You want to come to a place as a left-handed hitter and tell the pitcher, throw me the ball. And you want to stand right there and take a swing. You may not hit it every time, but do I have a witness here? It's good just to be in the game. I feel like that right now. But is there anybody here that's glad just to be in the game? You don't care what they say about you. You don't care how they look at you. You ain't trying to please them. You just glad you still in the game.
the Lord has for all of us. And we dare leave normal behind. Everyone standing, let's hope, Lord Father God, I thank you.